GNG Gameness New Generation. James Garrett Interview. Question, how long have you been in the dogs? And how did you get started? Answer, I have been in the dogs for about 20 years. I used to do boar hunting and for a while there it was like we hunted the place out. And Ronnie Hyde had a dog he bought from Carver. I told him I had a catch dog that I'd like to roll. I took him down there and he looked damn good. He was a $25 dog going against a $1,000 dog. At that time it really impressed me. My dog went on to win three or four matches. I'd hunt him one weekend and match him the next. I guess I just got hooked from there. Question, how did you obtain Jeep? And what made you choose that particular line? Answer, I had several bitches, some were bully son bitches, some were bred like Zebo. Kim Zwood was buying dogs off Carver at the time. He had Snooty, and Crenshaw had Rascal. So when a bitch came into heat I would breed one to Snooty and one to Rascal. I bred to Oso Negro a good bit, but I could just never seem to make it work. I had a yard full of dogs. I would clean my yard out and start all over again. I started going to the matches, and I seen a lot of We Hunt. It was like every time I went to a match, We Hunt was there. If it was every two weeks, he'd seem to show up, and he would win. Bully Bob, I seen him win his matches. These dogs were head and shoulders above their competition. And I thought then that I would like to have some of that honey bunch stuff. So when they bred her to champion Bo, I gave James Crenshaw a hundred dollars for Kate, and I didn't have but a hundred dollars. I actually wanted a male, so I went back a couple of weeks later and bought Jeep, and that was the best money that I ever spent. Of course, if I had known, I would have bought the whole litter, but so would have everybody else, I guess. Question, the match that most people would recognize when mentioning Jeep's name would be the Homer match. But what was the qualifications of his opponents to obtain his championship? Answer, his first match was into a dog called Chato, and he was a four-time winner. And I had seen him win two or three of his matches, and he was a hard-mouthed rough dog. His second match was against a dog called Weenie. We had a bit of trouble trying to get that second match. After the Chato match, the word got out. You see, Chato was pretty famous. He had won four matches at the time, and at that time, not many dogs had done that. Jeep just whipped him easily. They had to pick Chato up in 28 minutes. So it took a while to get that second match. That's when we got Weenie. He was going for his championship, he had already won two and won several chain fights. He had a real hard mouth and had a real unusual style. He would work from the bottom because he was real short-legged and he would get a dog on the root of the tail and shake. And he learned that the other dog couldn't get to him and he would just frustrate the hell out of a dog. He got Jeep like that once. Jeep would look around to try and get him, but when he done this, Weenie would shake and Jeep would lose his footing. Jeep finally got loose and I think it was about 54 minutes, and it was Weenie's turn to scratch. And the guy turned him loose and Weenie didn't move. So J.C. Shaw let Jeep go and he just knocked Weenie out from the guy's legs then the guy just picked his dog up. Weenie came straight from Carver. In his third, we were meant to fight Grand Champion Angus. I seen Angus beat Champion Otis. And based on the way that Angus fought, Angus would lay down on his back and turn his chest up, and that would be ideal for Jeep. So we got the match lined up and we traveled to St. Louis, but when we got there it was another dog that looked just like Angus. I was real upset. I just wanted to go home. I didn't even care about the match, but then we found out that this dog was a champion, so we thought that we put a lot of time in and that we should go with him. 
he turned out to be one of the best head dogs that I had ever seen. He just stayed on Jeep's nose and head. Jeep went 205 in that one. Jeep finally hemmed him up in the corner and got him in the chest and hurt him pretty bad. They finally picked him up. Question, is it true that Jeep's brother, Champion Charlie, was a better dog than Jeep? Answer, Charlie won his first match in 20 or 30 minutes. Then he went into a dog from Florida for his second and he won it in 40 minutes and the other dog wasn't hurt. He could have scratched but he just quit. The other dog had a real fast mouth and he won a match before. Charlie caught him in the corner a couple of times and bit him pretty hard and he just quit. To me that wasn't much of a match. I mean, he won but the other dog was a cur. In his third match he went into a 19-month-old pup and it went about an hour and once again the other dog just quit. He was just too young and he wasn't really hurt that bad. But every dog Jeep went into, he had to kill. Jeep's opponents were much better. If the other dog in Charlie's second match was down and couldn't scratch in 40 minutes. I would say Charlie was a hell of a dog, but when the other dog curs out and quits, that says he didn't go into a hell of a lot. I mean he did good to win and the other dog quit, but he didn't have show a real lot to win the match. Question. A lot of people say that Jeep's high standing on the ROM register of merit list is mainly because he was bred to hundreds of bitches, and you would have to get a few good dogs out of so many breedings. Can you tell us how many bitches he was bred to? Answer, I don't know exactly, but somewhere around 40 to 50, and most of them bitches were mine. Question, the Jeep line of dogs are very popular at the moment, so why did very few people want to breed to him after he became champion? Answer, there was more dogs being matched at that time than probably ever in our history and everybody had their own lines, and everybody believed in what they had. They were real reluctant to start outcrossing to the Jeep stuff. He got so much talk that people either loved him or they hated him, and most of the people that got beat by the Jeep dogs hated him. It's kind of human nature to believe in what you have and bad mouth what the other guy has, I guess. I don't bad mouth anyone's dogs. You can say Reed dogs are no good, Sorel dogs are no good or whatever, but you can say that and you say it often enough and one of them is going to whip you and make you look bad. There's good and bad in all. Question, what sort of a dog was Jeep? And was he a favorite of yours from day one? Answer, he was always a favorite. The dog was just unbelievably smart. You could talk to him. You could let him off his chain and he would jump at the first dog and you could tell him no and he would just stop and walk right on beside you. You could walk him through your yard and all the dogs would be hitting the chain at him and he wouldn't even look at them. Right up until he died, my daughter, who would have been five years old, would wrestle with him and play with him. He was just the finest dog you could ever have. Question, up to what age was he still siring pups at? Answer, I had puppies when he died. They were two months old when he died. He would miss a lot, but if you caught a bitch just at the right time, she might have eight to ten pups. You couldn't breed him every second day or so like you normally would, you would have to wait a week or two before you could breed him again. It would take him a long time to recoup. I might miss four or five then I would catch one. Question, when did Jeep die? Answer, in October 1990, I think. He was 13 years old and two months. Question, when he died, how did he go? Was it in his sleep? Answer, yeah, he had cancer in his nasal passages. I sent him to the University of Georgia. He started bleeding from his nose, so I sent him to the university and they just fell in love with him over there. 
They wanted to keep him. They did all kinds of tests on him. I told them to find out what was wrong with his nose and that I also wanted to freeze some sperm. So they checked his sperm and they said it wasn't strong enough for them to freeze. They really wanted to have a strong count for them to do it. Because the department that freezes it records the bitches that is being bred and monitors how many pups she has. It makes them look good if she has a large litter, but if she has only two pups it looks bad for them. I told them that I didn't care if she didn't have but one. They told me to take him home and they gave me some stuff to give him that would increase his count, but he just went downhill from there. His nose kept giving him trouble. Question, is it true that Honey Bunch died prematurely? Answer, yes. She died while playing on a spring pole. She fell off it and landed on a feed bowl on her back and broke a vertebrae. Then they had to put her to sleep. She only used to come in heat every ten months and she was about eight or nine years old. Question. Do you know how many times Honey Bunch was bred? Answer, oh yes, she was bred to Trim Moody, Oso Negro, Rascal, Bo, and then Zebo twice. Question, what do you think is the biggest mistake that beginners make when conditioning a dog? Answer, overwork, that's the biggest mistake that beginners and even old-time dogmen do. It's so easy to do. I've overworked dogs, you don't realize how much damage you can do by just overworking them. Question, if you had to start all over again and could not choose the jeep line, which line would you choose? Answer, to me, gameness is what separates bulldogs from hounds, collies and lap dogs. And I think one of the gamest lines is the red boy line. The reason I have this opinion is that I don't live that far from South Carolina and North Carolina, where so many of the red boy live. And I saw so many of them go, and the ones that I saw go, a high percentage of them were really game, so that cemented my theory that they were game dogs. Whereas somebody out west may have seen the Sorel dogs go and say, hey, they are game dogs. So it just depends on where you are geographically. But for me, if I couldn't get any Honey Bunch dogs, I might try the Red Boy dogs. Question, what advice would you give to someone starting off in the dogs? Answer, you need to find somebody that you can trust, somebody that's been in the dogs. And the longer they have been in the dogs, the better, somebody that will tell you something. I was very fortunate to have Bert Klaus, James Crenshaw, and I didn't necessarily listen to everything they said. I would sort through it and take a little from one and a little from the other and develop my own opinion, but you can save years of trial and error when you have somebody to help you. I know that's a problem here because your country is so young in the dogs and it's hard to find somebody that knows a whole lot. But read everything you can get your hands on and don't take anybody's word as the gospel. Just take bits and pieces. And use common sense. Thank you.